you don't have to go far to learn about nature. It's closer than you think. Take a look around. Welcome to Ebenezer Swamp. Ebenezer Swamp is a classic upland hardwood swamp located in Shelby County in the center of Alabama. This is one of the fastest during disappearing wetlands in the uh, southeastern United States. It's home to many species of animals and plants. Ebenezer Swamp itself is about 120 acres in size. And uh, today we're going to be exploring some of the different uh, plants and animals here and the relationships that they have. Relationships between the organisms living in Ebenezer Swamp form the basis of their community. Plants harvest sunlight to make more plants. Animals eat plants to make more animals. Fungi and bacteria consume dead plants and animals to make more fungi and bacteria. Nutrients flow from the soil into the plants, from the plants into the animals, from the animals into the fungi and bacteria, and then return to the soil. Most of the organisms found here are also involved in various interactions known as symbioses. A symbiotic relationship is one where individuals of different species live in close proximity to each other, sometimes on or in one another. There are three types of symbiotic relationships. When the activity of one organism directly harms another organism, we call that parasitism. When the activity of one organism has no direct effect on another organism, we call that commensalism. When the activity of one organism directly benefits both itself and other, another organism, we call that mutualism. A swamp is a forested wetland. The dominant plant species in Ebenezer Swamp is the Tupelo gum tree. The Tupelo gum tree is the most common tree in Ebenezer Swamp, and it provides food, material, and nesting sites to many of the animal species that also live here. A lot of our visitors uh, see something like this, this oil slick, and they get concerned. They think that somebody has polluted the swamp, but this oil is produced naturally here by the bacteria that live in the swamp. And you can see some of the bacteria in this orange mass here. These bacteria help clean the water of all the organic matter that enters into the swamp. And in the process of breaking it down, one of the intermediary stages is this oil. Oil is just a long chain hydrocarbon basically the leftover remains of organic matter, eventually this will be broken down ultimately into carbon dioxide. As a result, the water that flows out of the swamp is going to be much cleaner than the water that flowed in.
Wetlands, like Ebenezer Swamp, are some of the most important habitats in the world. Abundant water, soil, and sunlight support a thriving community of plants, which in turn support the many animals that live here. One of the plant species found in Ebenezer Swamp is Jack in the Pulpit. This is the pulpit. And there you can see Jack peeking out, getting ready to deliver his sermon, I guess. The beaver is the dominant animal in Ebenezer Swamp because the dams they build make the habitat suitable for many other organisms. The beaver lives on a diet of mostly plant material. The beaver cannot digest their food by themselves, but fortunately they have bacteria that live in their intestines that help them break down and absorb their food. The bacteria make it possible for the beaver to live on a plant diet, and the beavers provide food and a place to live to the bacteria. This is a mutualistic symbiosis. Sunlight is essential to plants. Plants use the energy in sunlight to make sugar, which they then use as food. There is a lot of competition amongst the plants in Ebenezer Swamp for sunlight. Many of the plants here are trees, which grow tall and catch much of the sunlight using their leaves. But some plants have found another way to get their leaves up into the sunlight. The climbing hydrangea uses trees in the swamp like a ladder, clinging to their bark while climbing towards the sun. This has no harmful effect on the tree that is being climbed, while it provides the climbing hydrangea with all the sunlight it needs. This is a commensalistic symbiosis. For most plants to reproduce, pollen must be moved from one flower to another. This process is called pollination. Some plants rely on the wind to pollinate their flowers, but most depend on animals. Birds and insects are common pollinators. Plants attract animal pollinators with the lure of food, usually in the form of a sugary solution called nectar. Many insects lay their eggs in the stems or leaves of plants where the surrounding plant tissue forms a protective shell called a gall. Inside the gall, the growing insect is protected from the environment and from other animals that would like to eat it. Many animals live in Ebenezer Swamp, including snails and slugs, dragonflies and damselflies, termites, salamanders, beavers, songbirds, waterfowl, raccoons, opossums, rabbits, deer, and many kinds of fish and snakes. More than a third of the United States' threatened endangered species live only in wetlands. Nearly half use wetlands at some point in their lives. Although wetlands are only 5% of the land surface in the United States, they are home to 31% of our plant species.